My name is Eva Daly, and this is the part two of my Science of Consciousness video. The first one focused on the physical foundations of this hypothesis, and this focuses on cognition. Consciousness science is an interdisciplinary field. To create a predictive science, it has to be founded on physics. And this is what this video will focus on. String theory proposes that particles are energy vibrations within compact dimensions. So we can re represent these insulated compact dimensions as particles that are connected to the spatial field, which commonly known as gravity. Gravity is often represented as a flexible field. Its curvature directs the movement of objects. When we look at particles, then we can see them as the energy vibrations represented by these horizontal lines. Each line represents different energy level and the particle's connection to gravity is on the right hand side. Gravity is shown by the S-shaped curve. The increasing pressure that results from the positive curvature field is sensed as increasing gravity, which reaches its maxima in the black holes. Their movement is inhibited. How does the mind fit in this picture? Biological systems must adapt to the environment and the physical laws. Abstract thought is founded on the understanding of space. Because emotions help survival by inspiring constructive response to discomfort, emotions are also essential element in the cognitive uh, space. This is shown even in the language. Problems are sensed as heavy and joy feels uplifting. So the brain and the mind are separated by a transformation. The brain orients in space through the sensory organs, but the mind is a predictive organ and it orients in time. It evolves over time. Lack of time is experienced as stress and the wealth of time is experienced as elation. The same physical laws, physical principles that are true for particles is also true for the mind. Quantum theory, relativity, and string theory also describe consciousness. Quantum theory 
has been utilized in psychology and sociology for decades. Perhaps it can be represented by a Necker cube. Here, this uh, drawing takes on a three-dimensional representation in the mind. And there is a quantum-like fluctuation where either the left-hand side or the right-hand side of the cube moves forward in the mind. Just as particles, the mind can be represented by discrete energy levels, as shown in the left by these horizontal lines. These represent different ideas, decisions, or beliefs, but these discrete states are connected to a smoothly changing cognitive space and the gradual evolution of the brain. Stress and anxiety limits the possibilities and over time it can lead to depression, which is the lack of the ability for action. In summary, the mind and matter are symmetric systems but we have to take into account their major differences, which is matter is oriented in space and the mind is oriented in time. More detailed discussion of these ideas can be found in my book, The Science of Consciousness. It has a specially detailed focus on the physical foundation of this hypothesis. A more practical book is The Power of Joy, which gives advice to how to better your life. Both books are available on Amazon. Thank you.